Hello, and I hope you are having a good day, a good week, a good year. Whatever is happening in your life at the moment, I hope you're having a really good time. But when you don't, who do you go and talk to? Who do you bounce ideas off? Today I want to talk about my part of my role as a life mentor. I haven't gone and done studies. I've learned a lot over the years and some of the little um, training things that I've done. But I've, most of it has come from life experience. I'm about to turn 61 and I had a pretty good life. I left home when I was 13 and went and lived with my grandmother when I was for two years to go to high school. And then I went up to college and did business. Then I went into the city and I did a small business management accounting course. Then I got a job, so I still hadn't gone back home. And as a, um, it was a receptionist at a motel. I'm a country girl and I learned a few things very quickly. I learned that men who travel order or have a call girl call in. And because we're a little hotel, it was not seen a lot of people coming and going. So a lot of married men and businessmen who didn't want to be seen in the big high rise places would come there. It really opened my eyes, so I learned a lot as a very young girl. Then I went and got a hairdressing apprenticeship. Did that for some time, got married, and raised four awesome children with my husband. In the meantime, we had sold up, we bought a property, and we, um, I went wrapping. Did that for about 14 years with three big companies. That was really interesting. And then life took a turn of where my husband died of leukemia. Going through all the processes of that, who did I speak to? Who could I speak to? How, which friends came and went? Which ones you thought were really your friends weren't and they didn't stick around. And the ones who were on the outside actually stepped up, who are still my friends today. Losing him and then going through work and trying to navigate how to do things. And then moved on, sold the home, rebuilt. Then a daughter had a car accident and broke her neck. In the meantime, I'd become a grandmother and I had started dating a man. What I learned about um, hangman's break, C1, C2, C3, C4, and how that affects and how Tara actually did really well. So I've now learned about repping, hairdressing. I've learned about how to start up small businesses. I've learned about leukemia and the processes and everything all through that, and the going through being a carer of someone going through blood cancer, that they call it today. And the families that you meet, the, the joys, the grief, all your thinking processes. Who do you talk to? What do you do? The good days, the bad days. And then having the daughter who, who broke her neck, learning all about that and being a carer of her. How do you cope? Who do you speak to? Who else has gone through this? And the fear of losing a child when already losing a husband, had lost already so much. Then a little while later, son comes off a motorbike and breaks both wrists. So I've got two children at home, adult children, that I'm now nursing. I don't remember ever signing up for it. But the underlining thing we did, because we're their mother. And then navigating a new relationship, while I'm still grieving my, my late husband plus going through these accidents, plus also changing a job. How do you get through all that? Who do you talk to? How do you navigate your emotions up and down? How do you become focused when you're down? How do you stay focused when you're up? All these little things all happened. 
and then moving on and sold my home and my partner sold his home and seven years later we move in and then there's fires there's fires all around us we had to evacuate are we going to lose our home or not another grief and my losing everything of my late husband's and then not long within a month of moving in getting this phone call of where a girlfriend's husband has just had an aneurysm and being there for her in those five days until he passed away. To comfort her, being a carer for her, when she's devastated because you know exactly as to what she's going through. She called you from the hospital because she can't think, but she knows that you will be there and you can speak to the doctors on their behalf, which is what I did. She became a little stronger and she was aware of what was happening but I was there for her. And then down the track, we had a dog attack. And this is just after COVID and a husband losing his business. I had left the hairdressing industry and was working on what I'm doing now. Learning all of that and being attacked by a dog, all of a sudden I wasn't the carer. I was having to be cared for. That was so different. I'm now on the other side. And I, it was hard to accept care from others. All the flowers that came, the weight you put on because I was laid up because it broke my ankle. All of these little things. And then about 18 months ago, my husband now, because we got married on our property, has now Alzheimer's. So I'm now a carer again. So all these little things of me having life experiences has helped me and has I've fallen into becoming a life mentor. I've been able to help many people and I'm really proud of where they are today. Some have been very proud to say that they've got a business consultant and life mentor because it's helped them. But it's not something where I go around and say, I help this person or that person, because you can't do that. It's their story. This is what they're going through. And I have the absolute joy of reliving what I've gone through. And when you look back, there's funny times in all of it, because if you don't laugh, you don't heal. If you don't explore and step over the comfort zone, you don't cope with anything else that's coming. Dealing with family to compare with friends is so different when you're going through a, something traumatic. Family tend to stay away a little bit. Not your immediate family, but a lot of others do, whereas the friends become your family. Going through all of this and being able to help with my experiences, not only just what I went through, but it's like, let me put it this way, when you buy all of a sudden a nice silver car and you're driving along and you just love it, all of a sudden you notice the same car as yours, different colours, but they've all got the same car and you never realised how popular it was. Oh my goodness, I've bought a common car and you thought it was rare. It's exactly the same. With going through these experiences, and being able to talk about snippets of it at a staff meeting or a conference, people come to you and go, oh my goodness, this happened to me, and that happened to me, this happened to my girlfriend, I was their carer. And you're saying exactly as to what we did. And they've all gone, thank you so much. Employers coming to me and saying, I had no idea about that person. Well, you didn't because you haven't experienced it. You don't understand. It's something that I have said before, if you've not walked the walk of someone else or been in their shoes, don't say you understand. There's nothing worse. I remember at my late husband's funeral, there was a young girl and was kept saying, I understand, I understand, and I was getting so angry. But it's not her fault because she didn't understand because she was only young. She hadn't been married, had kids, and was burying her life partner, her soulmate, 
the love of her life. But when you're an adult and you are in a position of listening to other people and when you are maybe a hairdresser, accountant, whatever industry you're in, if you've got to help someone, they will open up to you. But don't say, I understand. Or you can say, I'm sorry to tell you, but I actually relate to what you're going through purely because I understand because I went through this. And then you will get a connection like no other. The client will value you more and you will go way up in the list because you do understand what they're going through. It might be a different shade of what you're going through, but usually the feelings are the same. Anger, sadness, wanting to hide, staying in bed all day, wanting to punch something. All these feelings, regardless what it is you go through, they're very normal. And that's the other thing, knowing that you're normal. Crying all day, having a pity party, it's normal. It's really hard sometimes to sit back and listen to someone and not say, step in and say something. Being a life mentor is that I don't tell people what to do. I can't tell people what to do. I'm not a counsellor. I'm not a, not a psychologist. I'm there to listen. But also is to guide them, give them some scenarios, get them to have a look outside the square, give them a couple of different choices. And what they do with that is up to them. But then you hold them accountable for it whether it's in business or themselves, whether they're going to help themselves grow or not. This is where I push you. I get you to pull back the layers like I've had to do for myself with the grief. Why did I grieve when I understood it all more and coming out the other end? This is where I push you. This is where I help you pull back those layers to understand you, to step over that next layer, to step out of that comfort zone, to step out of that colour and to move to a brighter colour. And I call it colours because it's another chapter in the book. You're in a dark place. Let's move to grey. Let's go to brown. Let's go to a little bit of red and orange and let's slowly move out so you can see the sunshine. Yes, you're going to pop into that little dark place, place every now and then. But we help give you the tools to be able to step out of it. Do I still get into a dark place? Absolutely. But I now know how to get out. And it's allowing yourself to actually have a dark space. It's okay. You're allowed to do that. I call it a pity party, which someone mentioned years ago. I'm going to have a couple of days off. Or I'm going to have a couple of hours and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to have a cry and I'm going to eat my chocolate and I'm going to eat whatever and I'm going to watch a movie and I'm going to get it out of my system. But I put a time on it. So at four o'clock, we're going to finish it, we're going to get over it and we're going to move on and set some boundaries for yourself. Set some guidelines, set some goals that you want to achieve, whether it's a day, a week, a month. What is it that you want to achieve to get you out of it? Goals are so important. And when I have a look, I think I've actually written one down where I think I put it rewards. Now rewards are in episode 12. It's really important to re, to give yourself rewards when you've achieved a goal. Whether it be a diamond ring, a new car, or just a chocolate to be able to take yourself to the movies. Whatever it is, reward yourself because it's so important. Anyway, I know this one's been a little bit longer and I, I hope you got something out of this, knowing as to why it can be really important to have a life mentor. Not just when you're down, but when you're really going places to keep you accountable. Friends, and family, it's hard because they know you in a different space. A life mentor, we get to know you, but we don't know you on that other level. That we can tell you at blunt because that's what you're paying us for. 
and when are this expensive as you think. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm Kerry Hortlow and my business and brand is Brain Thinking.